Hello everybody. So this is a short video just talking through the importance of media. What do I mean when I say media? That term can obviously mean many different things. It can mean the news media, social media, but in an art history context, we use the word media, plural or medium, singular, to refer to the materials and processes that make art. A well-known example, of course, would be oil on canvas for painting. The materials, oil, paintbrushes, canvas, the process, painting. So that, of course, would be the media. Uh, and it captures and kind of tells us the materials and processes that were used. Pen on paper. Those are the materials. The process would be drawing. So again, there's some very common media that we are familiar with and then some less common media that artists use to make art. I should note that there are ancient media. This includes everything from stone carvings used by prehistoric people to paintings on cave walls that use things like crushed berries and other minerals to create pigment. And of course, contemporary, new, emerging media. Uh, today, there is so much developing in terms of technological advances that impact what artists can use. That can be anything from digital art and different types of digital art to, of course, uh, other new technologies or materials that are being invented in labs. But in this video, I simply want to give you some examples of different artists using different media just to help kind of teach you that it is important to consider the media when you are doing a visual analysis. Oftentimes, the choice of materials and processes help to convey the meaning. So let's look at some examples. We're going to start by looking at the Kingdom of Benin. These are, uh, was a kingdom that is actually still in existence today in much of Western Nigeria. There's also a country called Benin, but prior to uh, the formation of the Benin country or Nigeria, the Benin kingdom was a very, very long standing and dominant kingdom on the Western coast of Africa. The Benin people had a trade relationship with the Portuguese all the way up in Portugal, and therefore they received brass through their trade with the Portuguese people. So that should tell us something. When we look at an object, this is called head of an oba, and it's made of brass. If brass arrived to the Benin people through trade, it may was probably was relatively rare. It tells us that it was not an abundant natural material in Western Africa, but a rare material through trade. So that might help tell us that, okay, an oba is someone significant. And in fact, for the Benin people, an oba is a king or ruler. And so heads of obas were often created, not necessarily as portraits, but sometimes as portraits. And use, the use of brass signifies the high importance of an oba in Benin society. Now, it's important here when we look at this painting to recognize that oil on canvas had been around for many centuries. This is a painting by the French artist Monet. And so we're not actually going to talk too much about the oil on canvas here. Again, it had been around for centuries and actually emerged from Asia and again through trade starts to develop in Europe uh, during what we call the early Renaissance. But by time, the time we're in the 1800s, oil painting had been a dominant media used all throughout Europe when it came to painting. And I should have said medium there, a dominant medium, singular. But what I want to use here, this painting to, to talk about, is the style. Photography was invented in this same century. And in the mid to late 1800s, it was being utilized more as the technology of photography was advancing. And to a degree, this caused a crisis for painters. For centuries across Europe, 
painting and drawing had been utilized to capture images of historic scenes or images of people. Well, now there's this new medium, photography, that can do that, and it's quickly developing into a dominant medium. So it caused a bit of a crisis for painters, and the Impressionists responded by experimenting more with oil on canvas or painting in general. Suddenly, instead of creating more realistic or illusionistic paintings, they began to create impressions of color and light and dark on the canvas. Here we're looking at a boulevard in Paris, France, and we can see that Monet is attempting to capture the way the light refracts right off of the city street, the way certain colors like those little red balloons in the bottom right stand out against the busyness of the scene. He's of course showing movement in these tree uh, branches again that are painted with feathery brush strokes. So the idea here is that a new media, photography, impacted an old medium here, painting. And again, caused uh, photog excuse me, caused artists like painters to experiment more with this traditional painting style. So let's look at another work. This is a contemporary work from 2007 by an artist named Damien Hirst. Damien Hirst often likes to shock viewers. And this in some ways is a shocking work in part because of the materials used. This is a cast made out of platinum which is a very expensive metal. Uh, it is uh, from a human head, an actual human skull from the 18th century. Real human teeth are used, and then over 8,000 diamonds are attached and cover this cast of a human skull. The materials here are not just expensive, but they are very important for interpreting the meaning here. This is not just a drawing on a pencil. This is a cast of a human skull, human teeth, and diamonds that are used. Now, when we take the materials and also look at the title, For the Love of God, it helps us maybe think about how to interpret or analyze this work. Perhaps one interpretation is that Damien Hirst is making reference to a long tradition in European Christian painting to use skulls in the Christian paintings to make reference to uh, the vanity of life, the fact that people don't live forever, we die. And in um, uh, the painting traditions of Europe, skulls often showed the fact that we should contemplate what is important. And again, this was often used in the Christian tradition. You would see figures perhaps holding a skull and then another hand holding jewels and thinking about what is important, material possession, or other things. Another thought here is that perhaps there is a critique of greed. When you die, you die. Perhaps this title could be understood as, oh, for the love of God. Perhaps there is a criticism here of the wealth that a small fraction, the 1% of the 1% own in our, in, in, in our world. Um, and the fact that when you die, again, you don't take those diamonds with you. Another interpretation is perhaps that Damien Hirst is making reference to blood diamonds. Some of you may be familiar with the mining that goes into getting diamonds. Again, these are carbon. It is in the earth. And it can be very dangerous. There are a lot of human rights violations for those, particularly in parts of Africa and Central and South America that are mining for diamonds. And so again, these human rights violations often lead to death and not just exploitation of human life, but also the earth. The point is the materials here very clearly help guide us to the meaning here or help us analyze this work and interpret it. So another thing to think about is sometimes an artist uses a lack of materials. This is uh, an erased drawing by an artist named Robert Rauschenberg. Rauschenberg was a young artist in the 1950s, 
and he showed up at the door of a very famous artist in New York named Willem de Kooning, and he brought a bottle of alcohol and said, I would like to erase one of your drawings. Will you help me? De Kooning agreed, maybe because of the alcohol, and they looked through his many drawings, and de Kooning ended up giving him, giving Rauschenberg, this one. Rauschenberg then spent a significant amount of time meticulously erasing the drawing, framing it, and titling it Erased de Kooning. A couple of things are going on here. Number one, Rauschenberg was a young artist, probably trying to make a name for himself. So this was somewhat of a, a shocking or radical work to do. Uh, on the other hand, he's also making us think about, well, what is an artist? Does an artist make things? Does an artist destroy things when they make something? Um, and it's kind of thinking about the creative act. Is it again, birthing something new or an act of destruction? Also here, he's of course kind of making us think about who gets considered an artist. Is this now an artwork by Rauschenberg or is it still an artwork by de Kooning? So again, the choice of materials here create lots of interesting questions when we analyze this work. Now, finally, I want to look at two works by a painter named David Hockney. David Hockney is another contemporary artist who uh, began a painting career in the mid-century, the 20th century. This top work is a famous painting um, called Road to the Studio. It's actually in LA. David Hockney is a British artist, but lived and worked in LA for many times. This top work is a massive painting, very complicated to paint. You would have to have a large studio. You would have to have assistants help you stretch this canvas. Uh, onto stretchers, and then of course use ladders to paint this. David Hockney is known for his large-scale paintings. The bottom work is a more recent work. It is an iPad, quote-unquote, painting or drawing. David Hockney made it on an iPad. Recently, David Hockney exhibited these iPad drawings or paintings, and some critics were very negative about them, saying that they're not really art, that they're not as good as his earlier work. Others pushed back on this criticism by talking about David Hockney's age. He is now a very old artist. It is very difficult when you are much older and you have physical limitations to paint large paintings. It takes a lot of physical skill to do that. And so Hockney using an iPad allows him to continue making artists. So there was a pushback that there was some ageism or ableism in the criticism against these iPad drawings. So with this, I just want you to again, consider the choice of materials or the media or medium and the process used by an artist. There are always interesting things that we can understand about the media. Uh, that help us interpret works of art when we're doing a visual analysis.